Now we are going to meet the man who made all those videos. He's also a part of the organization committee of this English Fest. He is a very hard worker teacher. As everyone can see, uh, he's very dynamic, talented for making videos. Uh, he graduated from our program two years ago in 2018. And uh, so he's a newly qualified teacher, but with a lot of ideas and projects to keep growing in the teaching field. Uh, teacher Castro was an outstanding student at university. He was the language and linguistics assistant during his teaching training at the program. He has worked as a facilitator at English, commerce, as, at English summer camps for PIAP, and he has taught preschool, primary, and high school students. He's currently working at Jeronim at Jeronimo Rendic School in La Serena, and he's also part of the English team of, of organizers, as I mentioned before. Uh, his presentation is about why and how to create your own teaching materials. So we like to introduce uh, teacher Fernando Castro. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and can you see the presentation? Yes. yes. Okay, super. Okay, thanks for that presentation. It's an honor to be here sharing this uh, space with all those beautiful people, Karina, Alfredo, Rachel, Claudia. It's great to, to have this space to talk about our experiences. Okay, so as um, Javier said, I am a teacher in Jeronimo Rendit School. I graduated in 2018, so this is my second year teaching. And last year was my, my very first year. I had a, a very good experience as a head teacher and as an English teacher. But this year, after two weeks of classes, something happened. I don't know if you have heard about it, something like quarantine. I don't know. <laughs> yes, quarantine happened to all of us. That was the worst thing ever. That was me when I knew that I had to start uh, teaching from a computer, from, um, from my house through a computer. That was super complicated. And actually, I, I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, I, they, didn't, they didn't teach me that at, at the university. So nobody knew about this, and we had to create something, something new. And as Rachel said in, in her presentation, I felt that this, that this was a teacher's invasion because uh, computers, cell phones, social media, YouTube, TikTok, everything was related to leisure and fun. Students had fun playing on the computer. They had fun watching videos on the internet, but now we were there. And let's be honest, some students do not think that learning is fun or that school is fun. So as we were there now, of course, they would be reluctant to, to the class. And I didn't want that. So um, it was important for me to make my students enjoy my lessons and keep on learning because we were going to be supposedly <laughs> two weeks or a month, maybe two, but now we've been the, the whole year at home and teaching remotely. So we couldn't take the, the classroom as we knew it to, to the computer. So what should I do now? Actually, when I, when I said that, I was screaming because I was panicking the whole time. <laughs> so what should I do now? I'm not going to see my students. I'm not going to see them because at first, we didn't have Zoom sessions. We just sent the material. So how can I teach something if I don't know what my students are, are watching, if I don't know if they understand, how can I make this entertain? How, how can I contribute to parents in their job to teach, in their work teach, um, sorry, in their job to teach uh, their, their children? So I cannot take the classroom to the internet. 
I cannot take the, the, the whiteboard with my markers and with a please stand up, sit down. No, those things were for classes in person. But now in a computer, everything was different. And I had to take that into consideration. I want them to keep learning. I wanted them to keep learning because we were going to be a long time out of the school and we cannot waste time. They need to be learning. They need to be practicing their skills. Uh, they were going to miss a lot of other skills that they develop in at school, like social skills. But we need to, to at least keep developing learning skills. So that was important for me too. Uh, I need them to be engaged. Of course, uh, just a video of, of myself speaking, just speaking or, or, or talking about contents wasn't going to be um, as efficient as something fun. I knew that if I wanted them to, to pay attention to, to the things that I was sending, they needed to have something entertaining. So my solution was videos. Uh, you've seen lots of videos uh, during this, this afternoon. We created teachers and we have like eight episodes on YouTube, on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. We, uh, I also created um, Powtoon videos. Powtoon has become my best friend because it's easy to use. You have lots of resources over there and you can combine them, combine them in different ways to create tales as what's that? That was a tale that I created. Uh, or content videos like, um, I don't know, uh, I am good at or I am bad at, for example. Uh, also, video editors allowed me to create songs like Super Super Panda. That's a song that I used with uh, fourth grade students. And I was there showing flashcards and singing a song with my hands. They loved the song. They used it to study. So that was a very good resource. And of course, TikTok. Uh, it's a very good way to create short videos, one minute. Uh, and you have letters, you have uh, stickers, you can cut the video, you can add music, many, many things to, to use it for teaching, okay? Presenting contents mainly, okay? But now why? Why should we or should you create your own materials? First, because a video of you acting or narrating a story or explaining something on TikTok, it's appealing and it's fun. Children nowadays have access to TikTok or YouTube and, and they love spending time there. So if we, can took, oh, if we can take over those spaces, but in a fun way and we can continue teaching, that's great. It's contextualized, I mean, in terms of content, because you can find lots of materials on the internet, videos with vocabulary, videos with grammar explanations, but sometimes the, the vocabulary, the, the, the precise vocabulary that you are working with on a course book, it's not the same that appears in the book. So in, that may create a mismatch between what you're teaching and what you're showing. And sometimes the videos are not suitable. Sometimes are too childish or are for maybe older students. So if you create your own material, you have the context of your class. And that's very important. It's designed for your students. And this is very important because if your students see that you took, that you took time to create something specifically for them, that would set a different mood in the classroom. They notice that. They are very smart and they know when you took, you took care and you took time for, for them. Like they know that this video was specifically created for them. You can mention some of your students, you can say the name of the class, et cetera, or the grade. Uh, this sets the mood and your students will tell you, oh, you, you did this for us, or you're the only one, or you have created this especially for us, thank you. We love you, etc. Many, many things. We can maximize learning opportunities. And this uh, was taken from Kumara Vadivelu, which is an author that Ms. Nidia, Ms. Nidia Slum, 
taught me when I was a student. And he mentioned that we needed to take the class out of the class because generally students have their English lessons at, at, at school and that's all the English they get. So if we can upload a video to YouTube and we send the link or we, apart from showing it in the class, students will have more encounters with the language. And for example, YouTube, uh, I always recommend more videos, similar videos. So maybe they're watch, they are going to watch your videos and then another video and then another one and they are going to um, be surrounded by English or immersed in English. For example, the, what happens with this, the mini series that we created teachers was that some, some students knew friends already. I mean, I mean, it's obvious that I love friends because I use the music and the names of some of the characters. Um, so they have seen the, the mini series that we created and some of them are watching Friends now. Friends is in English and they are having encounters with the language. They are practicing uh, listening skill, maybe reading skills, etc. And with videos, we can have the information that we usually teach in a whole lesson, just in a couple of minutes. One minute in TikTok, three minutes, five minutes, and that's great. Okay, but now how? How do I create this? We need to be creative. But how am I going to be creative? You may be saying, oh, this is hard for me because I'm not that creative. Okay, but there are some strategies. We have to think of our students and we have to think as our students. Think of them, what they like, how old are they? Um, what things are they interested, they are interested in? And how they behave, think as them, think as a student of a seventh grade. How would they do certain things? How would they like to, to watch or to, or to listen to certain things? Another important thing is to dare to innovate so at the beginning, it's going to be hard maybe to create a video edition. It's not, it's not very simple. So it, it will be hard, but you, you have to dare. And the students will notice. They will see like, you, you can actually joke about it. Like, oh, this is my first video. It's not so good, but they are going to value that. They are going to say, oh, that's great. Thanks for the video. It was fun. Or you need to practice, but they are going to enjoy it. And that's great. And another good thing is to look for, in, for, is, for inspiration. Uh, watch videos, create a TikTok account, watch videos, you will know what the students are, are watching, what they are talking about. Watch more videos on YouTube. I, um, I found Outune on YouTube. So if you look for material, you will find the inspiration to create your own. Then, it's important to have the resources. So Google, Go I don't know if this word exists, but it makes sense for me. You can Google something. So Googling must exist, I think. <laughs> you, you remove the E and add I-E-G. Is that right, Miss Sandra? <laughs> okay, so Googling things. Uh, Google, uh, resources to teach grammar, resources to teach reading, resources to create uh, videos, resources to create songs, and you will find many, many things on the internet. There are many, many things. And also another resource is your colleagues, asking for help, asking their, it, it doesn't matter if they're not English teachers, but it, you, can, you can ask any of your colleagues, how can I do that? How can I teach this? Oh, have you got any idea? How would you do this? And Two heads thinks better than one. So we can do something with, with the help of our colleagues. They are very important. I have a great team with me. I have Damian, Sofia, Caterina, Marta Pia, Ramon working with me and they are always supporting and creating things. That's great. And planning. If you start with the idea here, you're going to have it there and you're going to think, 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 think. And finally, something will come up. So you write it down, you plan it, and then you sit down on your computer and start creating. That's important. Okay, now let's have a little discussion. So what do you think are the cons of creating your own videos for teaching? Where are the cons? Have you got any comments? 
what do you think may be hard or maybe a disadvantage of creating your own materials? I'm going to check the chat while you're here. I, I can help you with that. It, it says yes. time consuming. There is oh, yes. Everything yes. That. yes it's, it's time consuming, especially at the beginning, because you're not very um, skillful with the addition programs. But uh, you can save time by planning everything correctly. Like you, you have the pictures, you have the music, you have the idea, you have a, like a, a storyboard on your notebook, maybe. That will save a lot of time. And apart from that, we have to think that we're going to waste time one time because the next year we can use the same material. We have the opportunity to re-edit each of these materials, but it won't take as long time as the first time you create it. So generally at school, you work with some um, series of book and you can use it three, four times. So you're going to waste a bit of time, but just once, I think. There are more comments, Teacher Fernando. It says okay. it must be uh, original, uh, lack of ideas, and embarrassment, and choosing material that everyone likes. Okay, so embarrassment. You can. You do not have to show your face. Uh, you can narrate the videos like uh, with Powtoon. You can choose a cartoon that represents you. It's sort of like the mask that Rachel showed. So. That's a great tool if you don't want to act or, or perform a video in, on TikTok. And what are the other ones, sorry? Choosing material that everyone likes. Oh, it's, it's hard to choose something that everyone likes, but believe me, something different that a whiteboard in the market will, will be loved by everybody. Maybe they are, they are very used to watching someone writing on the board or showing just a picture on the screen, but if you can do something a little bit more uh, dynamic, like a video, it will will be uh, of everybody's of everybody's like. Uh, there's another comment. It could be challenging for some teachers. Plus, there are too many resources and do not know where to start. Okay. Um, so the, what, where to start, right? Did you not know where to start? Yep. Okay, you can plan. So start planning. So try with one of the resources that I've mentioned. Try with maybe Powtoon. And sit there, try to do something, one or two skills. I have worked with some students uh, here and the students that are doing their practicum. I gave a workshop and we practiced uh, using Powtoon. And we have some good results. They loved it. Uh, they they created a short video for introducing themselves. And so you have to try. It's, this is trial and error. So you can start with something little and then you can take bigger steps. Okay. So um, is there any other comment, Ms. Marion? There is a question if you have tried genially. It's an application. To oh, yes. Yes, I have tried Geniali. It's great. Okay. Yes, Geniali for, uh, for like slides. It's like a better version of PowerPoint. You have, um, you can like create different tabs inside the presentation. So you click something and another tab appears with a specific mention. It's great. It's a, gr it's a great tool. I love it. Okay, so what are the pros? Would you like to... to to point out the pros? Any comment? I can, I can start with uh, material. Uh, that can there, last is one, okay. there, is one, there are many. It says student, uh, students engagement. Uh, it's great. Uh, and students uh, love it. Motivation. All those yes. are mentioned as pros. Yes, if students are engaged, they they are they are going to learn, or it's going to be easier for them to learn. So, one of the pros that I can point out is that material can last for a long time, two, three years, five years. You can re-edit it as many times as you want. You can have your material, maybe a, a, a everlasting material. You can adapt certain things because you have that possibilities. Students are exposed 
to the language outside the classroom. As I mentioned before, they have more interaction with English. That's what we want. Students enjoying your lesson, thus learning. So if they enjoy, they are going to pay more attention. They are going to be willing to practice. If you show something interesting at the beginning of your lesson and then you present maybe a book exercise, they are going to be motivated and they are going to solve the exercise, even if it seems a little bit boring. I use the book almost all my lessons and they do not complain about it and they are motivated because of they see something fun, they had fun, they, they sang a song or they watched a video and then they can work on the book. Even writing on the notebook becomes a little bit more entertaining after something very fun to present the contents. And another pro is that you can, you can, you can contribute to teamwork, as my case, that I have worked with all my colleagues to create these videos. And if you have problems with teamwork inside your school, you have your networks. Imagine the, the networks that, the, that are here now, creating videos as a network, and they can share the videos. Well, I have a video for present simple. I have a video for uh, comparatives. I have a video for possessives. You can share the videos and that's going to be fun and it, that will enrich your lessons. And of course, Fernando, personal achievement. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, before going on, Maria Ignacia from first year of yes. the program, she says that um, teachers, uh, as teachers, we can improve our own skills trying new activities so we can also learn. Yes, yeah, sure. We need to be constant, constantly updating ourselves. I'm sorry, Marigna is from second year, not first, but second <laughs> okay. year. She looks so yes. young, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to be renovating your material, your skills, your resources. We, we, we need to innovate. It's, it's a must in our profession. And the last point is personal achievement. When you see that your students are learning, they're at the, that they are enjoying your lessons, that parents are happy with your job, that the, the administratives or the school are happy, uh, that fills you with joy. And that's something very important. So I think that's another pro. Okay, thanks for your attention. I really appreciate it. And here I have some of my resources, the, the ones that I use the most. Powtoon for cartoon videos, TikTok. Um, a good thing about TikTok is that you can, if your account is public, you can reach many people. So a students from another part of the world can learn from you. And that's important. Filmora to edit videos. Canva to edit pictures. It has amazing resources, free resources. Canva is amazing for, for pictures and slides, many, many things. And Snapchat for filters. Sometimes I use filters on my videos and that makes it even funnier. When students see that you're, that you're trying to make them laugh, it's good. Do not think that you're making a fool. That's important. Do not feel that you're making a fool because you're not. If students are enjoying your lessons and they are learning, it's worth it. Okay, and you can, you can see my resources on YouTube. That's my channel, Teacher Fernando. My TikTok account, Teacher underscore Fernando. And my email, if you want to contact me and ask me for information or for help, or if you want me to teach anything, you can email me uh, teacher.fernandoc uh, at gmail.com. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, well, there is here, here there is a, um, it's a kind of request. It says next time a workshop, how to use Canva and Powtoon. Oh, but for sure. Yes, we can, we can talk about it and create something. Canva is great. I love it. All right. Thank you very much. I don't know if there is someone who wants to say anything aloud um, instead of being reading, uh, perhaps. <laughs> I don't someone. see you. Wait. I want to say yeah. something. Yep. Me too. Well, I'm really tired. <laughs> so sorry. A long afternoon, almost evening. I think everything has gone smoothly and wonderful. And I really um, I admire Fernando. Well, we know we know each other for a long yes, time. We work together. Yeah, we work together. 
And I'm so glad to see you, Fernando, the teacher you have become. So congratulations. <laughs> and I hope you teach us how to use Powtoon and Kanban one day, someday. I <laughs> yeah, I will, for you. sure. Thank you. And thank you, Marian, for uh, organizing this wonderful um, session. It was great. Thank you. I feel I feel honored, and I feel so happy to see all these young people doing wonderful things. Oh, thank you thank so much. You, thank you. Okay, thank you, Fernando, because uh, all your videos and all what you have shown is going to be very useful for us. Um, if there is, if there are more comments, I don't know if someone else would like to say anything. I have a comment. Uh, I, I think uh, teacher Fernando is a great inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for us that we're students and I'm just starting. This is just my second semester. And I think that uh, being so uh, intuitive for education and for teaching and for understanding that um, that students also need a, a push, you know? Uh, it's something that only experience can teach you. Uh, like we, in class, we have studied motivation and how to use our voice and our expression to, 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 to control a class, to, to help develop a, a non-threatening uh, um, space for students. But being intuitive for education, I think, for teaching and understanding that um, uh, our students will also need a, um, I think I, I might be wrong, but a, a mirroring, you know, seeing a mirror, seeing also themselves in the teacher. Uh, because to me, it's, it's that using all these platforms during this uh, pandemic, uh, TikTok, it's um, uh, pushing and asking students to, to also uh, motivate and develop themselves in those apps, not simply use them for leisure and for entertainment, but they also have a responsibility with themselves and, and, and their process and their process. So I think it's, uh, uh, for me at least on, in this session, this day, as, like uh, as a student, I think uh, it's what has led for me the most. That intuition is something that we must listen and, and pay attention to, our, our teaching intuition, that we must uh, um, I don't know how to say it. Uh, also respect that student's uh, way of, 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 of how they are dealing with this pandemic. It's a whole system and it's not just the school and what they're learning and there's um, also this responsibility they had, as I said. It's also how they feel and how to motivate them, motivate them to feel uh, um, a good student, you know? I hope I was clear in what I was trying to say. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, you were. Yes, thank you for your words. It's important what you say to have a reference and to be intuitive, to, to try to, to see beyond the, theor the theory that you've learned and to see your students' needs, uh, to see their students, your students' likes, many other factors that we have to take into consideration when teaching. Well, uh, I think it's been a long afternoon. <laughs> Uh, we want to thank our guests, uh, Karina, Claudia, Alfredo, Rachel, Boris through his video, Nidia, and Fernando, of course, uh, he's from the, from the team, but he, who, he was our uh, uh, guest today. And thank you for sharing your valuable experience, your ideas, your projects, and, and your dreams, you know? And uh, well, I have a, a, a it's, it's kind of, reflection right and um, I would like to address uh, the teachers first I could say dear teachers 
the teachers who are present today, uh, this event was specially thought to show and value the job that you have been doing for so long, especially now in pandemic, even with your own sources in difficult contexts and with uh, uh, sometimes with just a few uh, tools. And um, for my dear students who are present today, uh, or teachers to be, uh, we hope you can feel inspired and motivated by these teachers and can follow their steps or follow your own steps or dreams. Um, you know that there are ways to do it. And um, uh, personally, I have to say that this kind of um, conversations or seminars or reflections can also help us teachers uh, or, or tra teacher trainers um, to be closer to schools and uh, to be more aware of what uh, school teachers job implies and uh, what they really need. I hope you have all enjoyed this afternoon together. I, I really did. And um, Javier is going to say goodbye because he has a new invitation.